Right, so I'm going to be playing with 500 rated players. Let's play some chess. Uh, yeah, so I'm playing Sicilian. My rating is 510, my opponent is 526. I'm playing the names of each. Right, so the reason why I'm making this video, even though it's, like, it's a different thing, I don't do this stuff. I don't want to do this stuff too much. I, I just want to do like one every 10 videos. Uh, I'm making ser serious videos. But I'm also doing this stuff. The reason is that... I've been asked by plenty of subscribers to do this more beginner things. Plenty is in two of them. Yeah, exactly. So here, the theory move is knight goes back, and uh, I'm attacking e5. Like he took the pawn, but I can take e5. So there's not much to think about theory here. Okay, he took me, so I can take back. So right now, let's talk about principles, right? Because this video is for beginners. Um, so you gotta develop pieces. You gotta develop your minor pieces as soon as possible. It's a funny coincidence that the only piece I've developed is the queen. <laughs> but um, I, I'm aiming at playing knights and bishops out and castle my king as soon as possible. The Sicilian defense, which is playing c5 as a first move, slows down the developer. I'm out of theory here already because it's not. I don't think this is supposed to be good. Right, let's talk principles. I'm gonna play bishop g4 because that puts a double attack. I don't think... Oh, yeah, I can make arrows. Double attack on this piece. And I wanted to double up the pawn structure. Uh, he's not letting me do it. He played a good move, I, I believe, although it's passive. So I'm going to play... I'm going to develop the knight. And you have to castle as soon as possible. Right now, his pawn is attacking my bishop. i got to move it. I can't keep it there. So I'm going to... I'm not going to give a bishop for a knight. That's not happening. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to preserve the bishop pair, so you want to keep the two bishops on the board. He's playing c4. It's attacking my queen, but that's a bad move because the d4 square now is going to be weak. A weak square is a square that cannot be attacked by pawns. And so I'm going to control that square forever. Now I need to put my queen somewhere safe because the pawn is attacking my queen. Where? Well, anywhere, actually. Let's play... Uh, D7 probably, whatever, doesn't matter too much. So, right, yeah, so with the Sicilian defense, I'm kind of sacrificing the development idea. Black gives up a developing move. We play C5 at the beginning to attack the D4 pawn. So the idea is to give you C pawn for the D pawn. And uh, yes, you do lose development, you do lose a tempo for development, but at the same time, uh, you control the d4 square and you give your side pawn for a central pawn. So what should I play now? Okay, let's develop. I'm going to play e6 so I can get the other bishop out and then castle the king. I think should, we should be honest to the folks at home explaining that you, you're playing the worst version of the Sicilian post. Uh, that's true, the Sicilian Ninzovic. By the way, just in case you're wondering, this troll behind me is a friend. And um, yeah, he's just trolling me. <laughs> Which is fair enough. That's why I call my channel Chess Trolling. Okay, so it's his move. And, uh, okay, he played a3. It, uh, it makes sense. He wants to play b4, sacrifice a pawn, but that opens the file for the rook. So you want to give up pawns so that your rook is controlling the entire file. So after pawn goes to b4, for example, let's say I take, which I'm not going to. Uh, or maybe I am. But the thing is, I'm going to be castling... Uh, let's play bishop to d6 bishop so now all my pieces are going out last thing I need to do is to finish development I need to castle ok play g4 that's a bad move if you castle your king you don't want to be opening your pawns in front of the king Right? the reason why you castle is so that the pawns can stay uh, to protect the king, now I'm going to remove the bishop to the only available square. You castle because those pawns are going to be creating like a castle for your king to be safe. And if you push the pawns, that doesn't make sense. Now here, I think I'm not going to castle at all in this game. Because let's look at this pattern here. H3, G4, here you're going to play H5. The reason is that you want to, uh, you want to swap the pawns that are on the same file of your opponent king. So if this pawn here were to disappear, I'd be happy so that our pieces can infiltrate. I kind of regret playing my queen to d7 now. I think I should have played my queen to d8 before so that I will have a... I should have seen that. But um, 
Yeah, I think I'm not really caring that much. Okay, I've got 38 seconds. I've got two seconds increment. Take the pawn. Uh, no, I'm not going to take the pawn. You, uh, I don't want to give up the bishop. Or maybe I am. But after taking the pawn, I'm helping his development as well. I should... Yeah, let's take the pawn. This is ugly. It, my, my king side is going to look ugly, but I'm going to take. But the thing is, I'm going to castle this side. And I've achieved what I wanted, which is a beautiful... Is triple <laughs> three times as strong. Uh, in my defense, I have drunk a bit. So now, okay, i gotta be, I got to be playing fast. I cannot play three minutes plus, so i got to be playing much faster now. I've played 95. I'm attacking his bishop. Then I'm gonna okay. Now I can't explain much. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be explaining more in the following videos because right now, um, um, yeah, I'm gonna castle. He wants to play rook h1. He wants to transfer the rook. Okay, next games are not gonna be three plus two. So next games are gonna be uh, okay. He's playing that. Let's do this. Let's just trade. Uh, just because I'm losing in time. So when you're losing on time, just trade. And uh, okay, let's play this. He doesn't have he, he doesn't have a yeah, I had a check. I had a check. I actually had a strong check. No, because he could have played Queen F3 blocking. I absolutely regret playing a three minus plus two. It can it doesn't give me the possibility to explain. Okay, he's taking there. I might just advance the pawn. Fair enough, he's attacking my bishop. He cannot take the pawn because of a threat. Which is this. So that's a free piece. Um, he doesn't have a check with the bishop, so he can't win my rook. This game is over. Okay, thank you for the pawn. That's free. And I'm attacking his rook. He didn't see it. Okay, right. So now that I have a little bit more time, because uh, the game is complete. Oh no, he resigned. Any comments, sir? Um, I'm just surprised by the phrase, oh no, you resigned. <laughs> Which is unlike you. But the folks at home don't know that, so I don't want <laughs> Okay, right, let's, uh, let's change the settings here. Right, so this is going to be a series about beginners, so I'm going to dedicate a little bit of my attention of my channel on the beginners the game is going to be five minutes plus five seconds increment uh, our opponent is going to be 509 that means 509 rated i am 516 i had to lose quite a few games on purpose in order to get this rating what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be explaining beginner stuff and uh and every every week let's say once a week i'm going to be publishing this video so first of all let's just play this move right knight c6 because otherwise I'm wasting too much time. So let me explain. I'm going to go through what moves you're supposed to be playing. Because well, you're supposed to be playing always the same moves at any level. You're supposed to play uh, principal moves. right? For example, I played c5 at the beginning. It's a pawn in the center. It's fine. I could have played e5, but I don't want to. Can't be bothered. I prefer Sicilian. And I developed the knight. And uh, so now I can just do anything. So let, uh, I'm going to... We're gonna get both. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let both bishops out, and also I can. I'm gonna develop uh, the other knight. So let's let's play pawn to d6, right? Just to get this bishop out. I'm not gonna be focusing on the theory against players at this level, right? Look at look at this move a3. So that doesn't make sense. So here's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be developing the pieces. What you need to do is you play uh pawns pawn in the center to start right we got a pawn in c5 here attacking d4 it's the central square so that's good now let's talk about other principles there's a pawn attacking my bishop i don't want to give a bishop for a knight unless i have a very good reason for that i might take the knight then queen takes back but then that's a kind of emotional move because then you're playing knight d4 this is a typical beginner mistake right where you kind of hope like you know one of the mistakes one of the many mistakes is like, oh, look, I'm using a minor piece to attack the queen. That's good. It, it, it Not necessarily. I mean, that move, knight to d4, for example, to attack the queen might be completely useless. Uh, another principle, keep pins. This bishop is pinning the knight. It's making This bishop is making the knight unable to move. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to keep it there on the same diagonal so that the knight is stuck. Right now, our opponent is getting a bit, a bit emotional. He's playing 
he played h3, he played g4, he played a3, he played c4. This is wrong. Like, he cannot do this. Uh, apart from the fact I'm attacking a pawn now, that's not the point. The point is, uh, he's not gonna he's not he's not gonna have anywhere safe the castle. Now he's playing h5, h4 or something. Okay, so that's a free pawn. And uh, yeah, I gotta take it. One rule is basically don't chase after a pawn if you're not done with development, right? So that's one rule. Uh, so we're not done with development yet. To finish the development, you have to, to develop, you have to get all your knights and bishops out, and you have to castle your king. If you haven't done all of these moves, these three steps, bishops and knights out, uh, castle the king, and have a pawn in the center, I forgot that, you haven't finished the development. You cannot start an attack unless you're putting blunders. So right now, that pawn was a blunder. Often these mo these pawn moves, they are kind of gambits. Sometimes they give you pawns in exchange of activity. Right now, if I were to go to g6, he would play h5 with an attack on the bishop again. I'm going to have to move the bishop again. Uh, if I go to d3, I get taken. And c2, I get taken. I get taken everywhere, so I might as well just take this knight. Uh, also, I can't be bothered thinking about the very best move. I'm just uh, yeah, playing... Uh, just to talk principles. Right, so a pre backwards with development. So let's just play another pawn move now to the center. So that's good. And um, yeah. So knights and bishops out there in Castle of the King. In this case, <laughs> this might not be very instructive because it's been quite a few moves. How many moves so far? Ten moves. And uh, I haven't. I'm not. I'm nowhere near finishing development. But the thing is, so, okay, let's develop the knight. I'm up in material, so I'm also willing to exchange pieces. Uh, we have to develop the knight. He's going to take, potentially, I will take back the queen, developing the queen. If he takes me, yes, if he takes me, I'm going to double up the pawn. But I don't care, because these pawns here, uh, they are not isolated. They're doubled up, they're not isolated, they're not a weakness, and... And what, what this f pawn is connected to the e file, and potentially, I mean, it is supporting it. And also, when there are no queens on the board, you don't have to worry about your king not being castle. Right now, I can literally play king to d7. Uh, just to make an example, I don't think I'm going to play it. Or maybe I am. Uh, no, I'm going to play knight to d4. This is breaking a principle because I haven't finished my development, and I have to finish my development, but at the same time, we're talking about blunders, right? Knight d4 here, I'm threatening c2, that makes a fork, attacks the king, attacks the rook. Well, I mean, if I if I get there, there is going to be check. The king will have to move, and I will take the rook. So because my opponent is so backwards with development as well, I don't really have to, to worry too much. Okay, this move doesn't help, because I have a fork here. So, the uh, thought you need to have before every move is check, capture, attack. So, that's the order of priority. First thing first, you're going to look at checks. Do I have... Okay, he resigned. Do I have a check? Right? Do I have a check? If you do have a check, see if it's good. If you, uh, if you don't have a check, then you look at capture. If you don't have any available capture, then you attack. But that only happens after the development. In this case, I didn't need to finish development because knight d4 was just too strong. How do I go back here with the moves? Can I even do this? Um, okay, the arrows are not working. G takes, um, and then he played d3. Uh, I don't even know how to make this work. Anyway, knight d4 was just too strong because he threatened this and... Uh, that move d3 block the bishop. That's another principle we can talk about. You don't want to, you don't want to block your own bishop inside. You might as well just play d4 at the very beginning, or e4 at the very beginning, e4 at the very beginning, so you can develop both bishops. But usually this kind of move like this uh, doesn't make sense. He could have played bishop to g2. That would have been a better square. Anyway, let's go on to the next game.
Right, so a new game. Our opponent is rated 553. Okay, that should be fine. So I'm going to play C5 again because that's what I play. Um, so he's developing the knight. And what should I do? I should develop the knight, right? Knights and bishops out, and you can never go wrong. Okay, so this is... Oh, man. Right. One thing about... If you're rating... Uh, if you're watching this video and your rating is 500 and you're one of those subscribers that sent me a message and requested to make videos for beginners, if this is your rating, which I don't think it is, maybe. But, however, uh, the problem, the main problem with these players is that they don't make sure they put pieces into safe squares. Like, for example, I can take this pawn. He's going to have to move the knight. He might have some theory something here, but I doubt it. Um... Maybe that's maybe that's a gambit. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. I'm not. I'm not the best at challenging the the close Sicilian, because um, I'm studying it myself. So here's the thing. Did I? Oh, yeah, let's go on with development, right? Pawn in the center. We have it. Knight. We have to develop the other knight, and uh, the bishops out. We're gonna do all of this. If we don't do it, we cannot start an attack. But we have to look at blunders, right? Uh, we every every time your move has to start with a check capture attack mindset. Do I have a check? Yes, I do have a check. It's probably not good, but I do have to look at it. Uh, sometimes checks in the beginning can be like deadly. Queen a5 check, and uh, if he blocks with a bishop, that's a free knight, right? Because this is also a fork. The queen going to e5 would be attacking the knight and the, uh, and the king. If he is going to block with the pawn, and then I can take the pawn, uh, I cannot take the knight because the knight will be protected by the queen. I can take the pawn, and then he can take back with the knight. And I'm breaking the principle, although I, I, I'm pretty sure that's just a fine move. And, uh, but you know what, let's just play principle. I just want to make this as instructive as possible. Queen a5, am I even missing something here? Queen a5, c3, well, it's probably just good, I'll just keep the pawn advantage. But no, let's just play uh, proper moves. Okay, he disconnected. Uh, how is this supposed to be instructive? Alright, I guess our rating is going up. 568. Okay, let's keep playing with another 500, right? I think the title of this video is going to be Beat 500. And then it's going to be Beat 600 and, and so on. Okay, this one is 700. Okay, should I include it? Probably not. Probably not. That's just a board. Can I board this? Alright. Give me a 500. Or maybe 600, I guess. Okay. All right. I'm going to play. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep um, just waiting forever. Okay, I'm going to play the names of each. Right? So um, let's develop the pieces. Uh, got my pawn in the center. Attack the central square. I got my knight. And now, um, okay, the theory here says d5. And uh, I know the theory. But I'm not going to play it. Because I, I just want to be very instructive, right? So let's just play knight c6 and go into a line I don't play, right? Then what do we need to do? If you don't finish your development, so right now I want to develop both bishops, okay? Can I go to d5 with the pawn? I got to calculate. So before you play a pawn to the center, make sure that uh, before you put anything anywhere, make sure it doesn't get taken. So the pawn is, is attacking it. So there's one, two, three attackers. And I have uh, two defenders, basically the, bish uh, the queen and the knight. One and two. So I can't play. So I'm going to support it with this pawn. And I can play d5 eventually. He's playing e5, which is fair enough. And now I need to move my knight. I've got a knight attacking this pawn. He's got one knight defending. So I have to think, can I take it? Well, no, I'll lose a piece. Right. So I've got to attack it more. Can I play knight g4 to then attack the, the pawn in uh, e5? Yes. Especially because he doesn't have the bishop able to go to f4. He doesn't have any other way to protect the pawn except, c except d4. But uh, I think I'll just be fine here because I can just take the pawn. Right. So I'm not even really able to go through the 
principles of chess against these players because sometimes they play weird moves. This game so far is the most normal, I think. So, I've developed both knights. I cannot start an attack before I develop both bishops and castle my king. This is not an attack. I'm not... Yeah, I am attacking the pawn, but the reason why I moved the knight is because he was under attack by, by the pawn. Okay, so I'm going to be developing the other pieces soon. I explain d3 to develop the other bishop, but I'm going to take this. And, um... Right, he's taking. Uh, he didn't have to. He doesn't have a reason to take. They could have just not taken. One of the principles we can talk about is you want to be taken so that you can take back. Talking about pieces of equal value. And of course it depends on the situations. Uh, F4 is wrong. He is not developing. Also he's giving me the chance to take, to give a bishop for a knight. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, a knight for a bishop. I'm going to do it. Knight takes bishop. I have two reasons to take this bishop. First, I'm giving a knight for a bishop. And the bishops are more valuable. I'm con I'm so obsessed with the bishop pair. And you should also be. Also, there's a double pawn here. Uh, it's not like the greatest of all weaknesses. Because, uh, you know, his, his queen is an open file. So it's not the end of the world at all. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tiny advantage that I'm gathering, you know, little by little. So we got to finish development, honestly. I have a check, but that's... Uh, I don't even dislike it too much, but let's just develop the pieces. Where can I put the bishop? Let's not blunder, right? Bishop d6, the queen can just take it. So I'm not going to blunder. I'm going to play bishop e7. I could also play d5 here, maybe. Pawn takes, pawn takes. No, because I didn't calculate enough, you see. Bishop e7. And... Um, Take bishop e3, attacking by pawn. This check remains useless because it can just be stopped. Although it does create a weakness on the light square. How can we call uh, a certain color weak? And when 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 uh, weak squares, basically squares that cannot be attacked by pawns, where usually your pieces will be in a great outpost. Right now, the white player doesn't have the light square bishop. So if this pawn were to open up, there will be a lot of places available for our pieces to go that are light squares, that are white squares. And we would love to get there because we wouldn't be bothered. But that's, uh, let's talk about it in a more appropriate moment. Do I have to worry about the c5 pawn? No, it's defended. So I don't care. And uh, I could develop my bishop uh, from the fianchetto. Why not? Let's castle, actually. Let's castle. What's more instructive than castling? Okay, he's putting more attack on, on this move. So, one advice is... Uh, advice, I mean, the, the rule is... Um, always look at the last move of your opponent. Don't underestimate your opponent's plan. I mean, don't ignore your opponent's plan because you're just focusing on yours. I know it's very natural to focus on your own plan uh, more than your opponent, but you got to pay attention to what your opponent's trying to do. He, he might be trying to go... Okay, I just play d6, maybe. I want to develop the bishop. But this bishop doesn't have a feature on this diagonal because the light squares are kind of occupied by too many uh, pawns. So to give more freedom to my bishop, I would love to put it on this diagonal. Thing is, after d6, if he plays knight here... Um, but uh, you know what? I can't be bothered thinking. Because I, I've got 1 minute and 46 seconds. Yeah, of course. Right, so shall we just develop the last bishop? Okay, we can call our development complete. And uh, yes, we uh, our development is completed. Right, so okay, finally time now. Now that our development is over, you know we can finally do check capture attack. And it's time to start an attack. How do we attack in chess? Well, let's look at the king. The king is in the center, right? So I want to swap the central pawns. So that the lines will open, the files will open for the queen and rooks. But I, I cannot say that my development is uh, allowing me that. I think I'm just going to, you know, this is a free pawn. But that also allows the white player to play the rook here with the tempo. Meaning it's going to attack a piece, it's going to come on, on the same file of my uh, um, uh, king. I don't like it. 
So I'm just gonna kick the knight away probably. Uh can't be bothered. Looking for the best move here. Let's just play this move and see how he plays. And uh So I'm winning a material, plus one, extra pawn. If I were to trade queens, uh, and I'm fully developed, which I am, that's good. Because that extra pawn in the end game meaning it means it's an extra queen. If you think about it, right, a pawn is a future queen. Right, he's going back. So Right. I wanna play let's play d5. Uh, pawn in the center, you want to have more as many pawns as possible. Oh, I got 46 seconds. All right, I think I'm going to be speaking less. No, I'm not. So we're going to have to try and produce a pass pawn as well. Right, his queen was attacking nothing. Right, well, he wants to play rook here, which is fair enough. Pawn up, can't, uh, pawn takes, pawn takes. I'm just calculating. He will just be uh, winning material. So, plenty of moves. Plenty of moves. Okay, I gotta do something. Now I'm gonna be playing faster. So, let's develop the rooks. How do we develop the rooks? Let's go into the central files. Uh... Always put your rook on the same file of the opponent king. I got 20 seconds. Hey, when he put the rook on the same file of my uh, queen, so I'm going to remove it. I don't like this. And then later I'm going to put the rooks here. These two squares are the ideal places for the rooks to be. Uh, especially where the king is in the center. But in general, yes. Although, when the king is castle, for example, a rook on an open file that is on the rook file, like the h file or the a file, absolutely good. But like in the center, it's fine. Okay, he's uh, he's just going... Okay, is he threatening anything? Let's play, let's play the rook here. Uh, I, I think I'm just going to be trading everything. And... Um, let's just trade everything. Man, I'm going to lose on time. Eighteen seconds. How is that even possible? Okay, now I'm gonna. Uh... Well, maybe I'll just lose this game because uh, at the end of the day, the, the the goal is to just instruct. So I'm using a minor piece to attack a major piece. Improving the, the position of the bishop. Although the bishop was fine in b7, but also, well, I played in a rush, I'll be honest. I should play like 10 minutes games or something. Right? So let's uh, take a pawn. It's a free pawn, let's take it. Also, I want to swap pieces. If I swap pieces, I got an advantage of plus two pawns, which is a fair advantage. And, uh, okay, so yeah, let's swap. Rook takes rook. Swapping is good if you're winning in material. Okay, so now the queen is attacking my uh, bishop, so I gotta remove it. My bishop is protected by pawn. It's always good to have minor pieces protected by pawns. In squares, they cannot be attacked by pawns. Unfortunately, in this case, he can attack us. And uh, maybe I'll just go back to the fianchetto square, and the bishop there is guarding a lot of stuff. Okay, that move does nothing. And um, I'm going to keep swapping. I'm just going to develop the bishop to this square. Although I liked it in uh, e7. I want to take the knight. And uh, I've got two attackers here. He has one defender. So that's good. Right, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna? Is, I think he's gonna move the knight here, maybe. Okay, uh, he's d defending it more. Right, let's play this. I'll just swap. I don't care. I need to swap pieces real badly. 
So now I'm going to be transferring my queen here. No. No, I don't like it. Let's go here. So I'm attacking a pawn. Oh, I've actually pinned my own bishop. Oh my god, that is unbelievable. So basically, okay, well, you didn't see it. So he was threatening uh, to take this pawn because this pawn in g7 was pinned. So I've just moved my king. I'm still pinned. Thing is, I'm in a rush now, so I gotta hurry. And I can't really think. I can't explain and play fast. I wonder if he's gonna see c4. c4 wins. C4 wins. So I also, I always look at the uh, isolated pawns. Is playing there. Let's just, uh, okay, let's play this. Let's allow the rook to f7. Wow, what am I doing? So I just want to trade pieces, right? That's all I want to do. And uh, I've got, what, what, what the increment is five seconds. So he was attacking this pawn further uh, with the queen. I don't know why he didn't go there with the. Actually, I think that's a woman. I don't. I don't know why she didn't go to f7 uh, with the rook. So I'm just gonna defend it more. It is completely non-instructive to use a rook to defend the pawn, but sometimes when you're playing defensive, okay. So he's giving me a chance to trade, which I'm really glad to take. And uh, we've got three passed pawns. A passed pawn is a queen, basically. Now the idea is to play queen e4 in case the queen moves and just trade everything. And um, okay, let's trade. So I think the moment of panic is over. I'm going to play g5. All right, now I think hopefully I'll be able to explain more because the, the tension is gone. I don't have to play blundering moves anymore. So this is a passed pawn. I can push it. It's protected by a bishop. These all are all protecting each other. You always want to create a uh, chain of pawns. I'm going to play... Actually, I'm not even going to care. I'm just going to push. Um... All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to push further. Right. So now I'm going to support the passed pawn um, with the rook. I should have played bishop here, actually, and then played the rook to another square. But again, I cannot be very instructive when I have no time. I don't want to lose to a 600, right? Um, the idea now is to push and make a queen. And we have connected pawns. Connected pawns are pawns that are next to each other, and so they will support each other. Uh, okay, he didn't... Oh, my God. Okay, let's promote. Queen, rook takes, rook takes, check. He has to block with the bishop. And um, uh, check again. Right. So, let's go to... Since this is a video for beginners, let's just explain. Let's just explain the checkmate with the rook, I guess. Rook against king. Yeah, let's do that. Right, so I'm just going to advance my king now. My rook is cutting off this uh, this rank. The king cannot go anywhere down here, right? And uh, then I'm going to check. You can only check when the kings are facing each other. In this case, we, we, could, we check, but the king cannot go down because there's a pawn in h3. Oh, no, she resigned. All right.